Yankee Sporty is with Golf Taxi Departing Southeast. That's one five three seven Yankee Eagle Tower, Spark zero five one six one zero six zero one four. Which runway you want? I'll take runway eight, please. That's one three seven Yankee Runway eight, Taxi via Alpha. And the squawk was zero five one what? Zero five one six. Zero five one six. Thank you. Three seven Yankee uh, Runway eight Alpha. All right, so we're just going to go right over there. If you want the controls, you can. Okay, have my flight controls. Yeah, your controls. So just Sorry. to the right side of the yellow stripe right there, on the edge of the grass. To the right side of it. Yep, okay. I like runway 8 because there's no taxi time. If you go to runway 3, we got to go way down there. Excellent. Yeah, we went out of Honolulu once. That was about 20 minutes of yep. learning so how to Yep, so right along in here. Any place you want, we'll do a quick run up. Okay. Um, what, what, where do you want me to point this uh, thing? Yeah, just yeah. right there, fine. I usually just point the tail of the grass in case somebody comes up behind us. All right, we're right into the wind too, so it works out well. All right. All right, so... I'm going to let you do the run-up just so we can save some time. All right, I'll just do it quickly. <laughs> yeah. All right, so... Your flight control. Float check, float check, looking good. Yeah. Everything's looking good. Power to 1600. Thing with a two heel attack. Pages are good. Left yeah, back good. Right back anybody. good. Thing with two, be advised. Power be good. Tower Sester 1537 Yankee, ready to go, runway 8. Sester 37 Yankee, be advised, shark to mower uh, midfield on the left side of the runway. Um, is aware that you're departing. And uh, traffic uh, will beam the west side of the tower, land the terminal. Make your right turn out at the departure end, runway 8, go for takeoff, 105012. Go for takeoff, runway 8, right turn out at the departure end, 1537 Yankee. Alright, let's do it. Alright. Alright, so it's all in a static, uh, statue bus per hour, so okay. about 65 to 70, you want to rotate and climb at 80. Okay. And we're only going to yeah, go up to about 1,500 feet. Control. Control. Arch clear. Yep, field elevation's 35, so... <laughs> okay. So we're going up to 5. About 1,500. Anywhere between 1,000 and 1,500 to start is good. Okay. Here we go. Counts are low, we'll stay low. for right, time got to... Power coming in. 1, 2, 3, off the brakes. out this prince from Bahrain is a big time uh, into the Iron Man kind of stuff, but they're doing an Iron Man competition yeah. in Kona. So he flew in his airplane here to go to the Iron Man. We did a, uh, we did a 5K yesterday down there. It was crazy. Oh, wow. So many people, so many athletes out there yep. just running. So go ahead and make a right turn. Okay. And we're going to be heading right for that little point that's sticking out in the bay over right there. You're saying right at that. So the clouds are kind of low. We probably ought to go ahead and just level off fairly low here. Okay. You want to level off now? Yeah, I think it's so. 500. Once we get over there, should, uh, the ceiling should open up. All the clouds sent in to hang right over Hilo for some reason. Okay. Matter of fact, that little opening right over there would probably be a good one to go through. Let's just okay. do that. Yeah, this sight picture is a lot different because it's, it's just so low. You uh -huh. know, you almost look like you're, you're negative. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Right, we'll pull the power back just a little bit. Yeah. We've got new cylinders on this thing. I got about oh, 20, yeah. 20 hours on it. Still, still breaking in, I guess. It runs a little bit warm. Taxi via Echo back taxi run A from Echo. The cylinder head temperatures all seem good, but the oil temperature gets up a little warmer than it used to. Four again, but uh, Echo uh, E back taxi at the end of one five nine one. Want to find anyone you said you need time at the end? Yeah. My friend, anyone, Roger, make a uh, back deck. Right, we'll we'll right over there. Just go right through there. Yep. Okay. It actually takes us right to okay. the picture eight, which is pretty cool. That's where we want to go. Point five nine one. 
departure. Over to departure. See you later, one five three seven Nikki. Departure Cessna 1537 Yankee 600. We're going to stay down here for clouds for a little bit. Cessna 1537 Yankee, Hilo departure, radar contact. Yeah, it's been like this all day, off and on rain showers, and kind of low clouds coming through, but yeah. hasn't stopped us from getting where we want to go so far. Yeah, the taff looked real good yesterday, and then about 12.30 it started raining. I was like, oh boy, I don't yeah. know if this is going to work or not. But Frank, frankly, I hardly even look at the taff anymore, they're so often wrong. <laughs> I look out the window, yeah, it would be a good day. Uh, well, we'll see about it. <laughs> or, nope, I'm staying home. <laughs> That's pretty much the choices. Anyway, this is the Mauna Loa Macadamia nut farm we're flying over here. Okay. If you buy anything from Mauna Loa, right there's the factory, that's where it came from. They do all the chocolate covered and garlic flavored and you name it, they get them all. And nice. uh, so they put the tall pine trees around the macnut trees to serve as windbreaks so they get more nuts. The, um, those trees, we, we came in from the north, yeah. coming down the road there where the all real, the valleys real tall. Yeah, well, those are eucalyptus trees, there's a funny story behind them. Back in the late 90s, there was this company that had this wonderful idea to lease 10,000 acres, plant all these eucalyptus trees, and then while the trees were growing, they were going to make a mill and turn them into a veneer for making plywood. So the uh, problem was they ran out of money. They never built the mill. Ah. <laughs> they got all those trees planted. So there was another company that was harvesting the trees and then uh, shipping them to China and Japan for uh, turning them into, oh, look, a Hawaiian hawk. It's thermal right there, yeah. probably. Oh, no, it's not a hawk. It's a, is that a frigate bird? Oh, yeah, it's a frigate bird. Cool. So, anyway, uh, they were send, selling these trees to China and Japan, but then they weren't making very much money because the shipping costs were too high. So uh -huh. they ended up quitting. So now the plan is they're going to start harvesting and burn them in a, in a mill, or, excuse me, a, a power plant that they're going to be designing here that burns renewables. We're going to climb up a little bit. Let's just go okay. get right because yeah, we're going to cross over these houses so a little bit lower for that. Boy, the weather has really gone south since my last flight. I'm really hoping this will work out. Not near as good as I thought it was going to be. It doesn't take any right rudder in the surface. Yeah, uh, it's only 145 horse engine. <laughs> Just about no torque at all, right? You want to go up to? You want yeah. to try to get to that 15? Well, if we can stay at 1,000, I don't okay. know if we're going to hit 15. The clouds, I think, are pretty yeah. close. But it's speed up for it. So you said you just did a top overhaul? Yeah, just the cylinders and connecting rods. Yeah. They checked out the cam and the crankshaft. They, they, uh, however, they checked all that. So the, the bearings were all good on that, but the connecting rods themselves, the bearings were elongated. Tried to get those. So I uh, also had to replace the aileron cables. And I put new seats on, seat covers on. Yeah, seats look nice. Airtex. No instructions at all. you got to figure it out for yourself. <laughs> and uh, 1500 bucks for the darn thing. like 90, I was like, this doesn't seem to have a, well, it's a 150, I guess it's not supposed to have a lot of power. I'll show you what <laughs> happened to mine. So I've got the Continental 0300, six cylinder. So here's a normal cylinder, so you got the pivot right here for the connect, the, yeah. uh, look over here on this side. If I could get it to come on, camera, there we go. Just all completely broke. Oh my goodness. So the valve, the valve rockers just completely fell out, they were just laying in the valve cover. Oh. And so I had a second cylinder that cracked the very same way. It was getting ready to break the very same oh. way. 
So uh, that's the same thing. It had chrome cylinders. They were aftermarket refurbs. And the previous owner had put them on. And it's like, hang that nonsense. Let's don't go there, because I really yeah. think that's crap. Let's go there. Let's go see if we go do Holly Mama first. Maybe the shit will blow through. That's what I'm hoping anyway. That's the 37 Yankee radar search terminated. It's one of the farm frequency change proof. Over to VFR, see ya, 1537 Yankee. How's it looking over there? Uh, no, not great. From, I mean, the vent is down, but downslope's all wide open, like the Royal Gardens is good. Okay, cool. And uh, how about Holly Mama? Don't know. Say again? I do not know. Okay, I just looked at the webcam a few minutes before we took off, and it was nice and clear. I'm hoping it'll still be that way. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. And it uh, looks like Fixture 8's probably down right now. The clouds are pretty low over the top. Happy. And Cessna 37 Yankee coming up on Pahoa and Highway 130, 1000, heading for the shoreline. So this lava flow right here happened in 2016, just two years ago. It's coming right for the town. Wow. There's uh, two branches, the furthest branch over there actually went down the hill. It burned one house at the top of the hill over here. And then it went down the hill through a Japanese cemetery, through a macadamia nut orchard. And then came into another guy's backyard, came right to the edge of this backyard and stopped. <laughs> wow. And he was one lucky dude. <laughs> so uh, this is our little shopping center right here. And this lava was coming right at it. And you can see right, it stopped right where we are. So it was pretty close. So they closed all the shops, and got all the gasoline out of the ground from the gas station and everything. And uh, so we, were, we were pretty happy that it stopped. That's 2018 flow right there. Uh, 2016, 16. two, two years ago. So right here is what we call a transfer station. It's where we take our trash. And we drop it off here, and then they take it to the dump for us. There's the cemetery I went through right there. The little green roof building is uh, part of the caretaker's place. And there's the wreckage of the house. That building that's standing is their uh, garage or barn. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Then they had a little pond back there. It was all full of fish. Boy, and all the fish. I will stay one. Yeah, we'll probably need to go a little bit higher. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anywhere along in here where it looks clear, let's just go that okay. way. We'll, we'll be fine. Okay. Nice clear spot over that way. We'll just okay. go out there. That'll work out good. So these real pretty trees that we're going over here, the kind of flat top, they're albizias. They come from Central America. They reproduce rapidly. They grow very, very fast. But they're very brittle. And every time we get a strong windstorm, they fall over. Some of them can get trunks like three and four and five feet across. Huge trees when they're older, and uh, they cause all kinds of problems, destroying people's houses, coming down on their houses, or power lines. Uh, last big storm we had come through with a lot of wind. That we uh, a lot of neighborhoods were without power for two or three weeks, waiting for them to cut all the trees away from the power lines and restore the power line. This is really good, nothing. Yeah. Yeah, right there. We could just be zip right under that. Once we get out okay. the shoreline, we'll be fine. We we'll go down a little bit further. The weather was real clear there earlier. I'll have to check it again. Six brand new cylinders for my little aeroplane and uh, Ooh. original Continental Fiat. Yeah, still clear over there. Okay. So we're fine. We'll just keep going that way. Yeah, clearing up over there. Nice. Just rises up so gradually that you yeah, it's like that. There's a lot of visual illusions you get here too. Yeah. That's all. Go all the way to the uh, Macau. We're gonna come back. Okay, I'm going to follow you. Is that helicopters? Yeah. Or? Uh -huh. Doesn't sound like any of <laughs> Yeah, they don't. <laughs> Must be some nice helicopters. Yeah, the Eurocopters. And uh, MD-500s and Eurocopters, but they all, the radios are really clear. Did you put the JPI in with the new cylinders? Or no, I bought, together? when I bought the airplane, I bought it from a mechanic and had him put that in before I took delivery. Those are awesome. All right, this is looking great. All right. We're going to go that way, and as soon as we get to where we can climb, let's do it. We want to get up to about 5,000 feet. Okay. So 
right over there is the town of Kalapana. Used to be a nice little town there, and then when Puhu Oo, the vent over here, was erupting, the lava was originally just going into the ocean, but then it started coming this way. So in 1990 and 91, lobes of lava started coming into the town. Each lobe would burn five or ten houses until finally the whole town was destroyed. Then lava kept going over the top of it. It built up lava, so the whole town is about under about 70 or 80 feet of lava. So after the lava quit going that way, the people who owned the land, like most of them didn't have any money to go anywhere else, so it's like, well, what do we do? Just build on top of it. So they're just building houses right up there. <laughs> so they're building without any kind of building permits at all, so they can't get insurance. Oh, There's no utilities out there, completely off-grid. But the people who are doing it, I mean, I've talked to a few of them, and it's like, you know, they wouldn't live any other way. This lava you see here all came from, uh, from 1983 until fairly recently. I think uh, February is about when this lava stopped coming. Hey Chris, are you taking shots with the uh, iPhone too? No, but I can. Yeah, to get since they get the wider shots here. Oh, here we go. Uh, this is how it was when we went when we went saw the. Uh, the volcano, and then we came down here, and it was completely clear, and up there it was like just rainy and dre dreary. Yeah. Now for California. Three, it says about three seven Yankee, about two miles Malco of Calapana, two point seven climbing, heading toward Holly Mama. Here, Malka and Mackay. Malka means towards the mountain, and Mackay means towards the water. So, for Malka of the town or towards the mountain, <laughs> up, up slope basically. Dude, this is not bad at all over here. That's a lot of lava, isn't it? Yeah. So the vent is right there, okay, the top Mama, of the vent is in the cloud. Okay. Climbing for the south but Holly Mama is over that way quite south. a bit further. We'll, we'll just stay this way for okay. now until we get up higher. So, uh, on the National Park grounds, we're supposed to be 2,000 feet AGL. Okay. Sea arch, is it? Oh, it's uh, up ahead, yeah. Okay, okay. Trying to get my bearings where we were at. Yeah, you'll see that. We're actually going to follow that road up to Holly Mama. Sky of the vent down to Jack's area. Welcome to 506, Papa There's Hotel. Right there. uh, Oshul, Wawa 300 around the cave to the old ocean entry. Uh oh. Still looking pretty ugly over there? Not looking so great. Yeah, that's what I thought. No, that was a question. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I was asking. <laughs> yeah, but there's another pilot. Sorry. Sorry, what were you asking? I was just wondering what the cape looks like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a reason up down at 300. Okay. You coming all the way out to the volcano? I'm just going dropping people off at the AT&T town near PGD. Okay, good deal. I'm going to be uh, going offshore of the X and I'll be headed out towards the Cape. Okay, I'm just beaching in, kind of uh, 1960 flow. I'm 400, trying to head up to PGV. Okay, but it's 26 south, east side of the Hare Ma'u Bao, climbing through 6 thousand feet, right and left, and back to the uh, Cape Kumukahi. Three seven, you can just pass the Long Kapuka head and towards Holly Mama, four thousand climbing. Holly Mama, south east side, south side is wide open right now. Perfect, thank you.
Now, can you take it for a second? I have the control. Here, your bike controls. How's it looking? Looking great. All right, so turning in towards it right now. Oh, so it looks like it's open up yeah, there. Yeah, that's what he was just telling me. Sweet. So look at all the lava down here. That's cool. Oh, man. So that's the road you went down to get to the sea arches. Sea arches, you can see uh, okay. down there where it turns and goes along the shoreline. Yeah. Down there where the cars are parked. That's okay. where you were. Yeah, this is really impressive on the ground, but you just can't get the pictures like this. That's the 37 Yankee over the hairpin, heading for Holly Mama, 5,000. I just passing west side of the Ivana Uru, 6.2, say hi till I see ya. Ah, thank you. This reminds me a lot of the Grand Canyon. There's all these different waypoints that only the pilots who fly the canyon know exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like I, get a, I get a lot of pilots who call me up and want to rent the airplane and go out on their own, and it's like, you really don't yeah, want to do that. Yeah, I, the first time I went to Honolulu, I was like, uh, I, I was going to do that, and I was like, why? I can just take the instructor with me. He knows the airspace. I don't have to deal with it. It's totally less stress, and I still get to fly the airplane. Absolutely. So your controls, by the way. My flight controls. So, yeah, it's definitely the way to go, and it saves you a checkout, too. Which, yeah. I waste the money. Yeah, exactly. I had one guy call up and that. So you want me to go in there? Yep. I got that helicopter there. 37 Yankee has a shotgun in sight. Keep going to five. Thank you. Yep, we're, we'll go up to about six or so. Okay. Yeah, we got, yeah, it right. kind of rises right there. 6,000 gives us good clearance and the park people won't complain at us. Do you want me to cruise climb at 80 or do you want... Oh, yeah, you, know, or you can lower the nose a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're actually high enough to be okay. 26. The crater's almost dead off the nose right now. Oh, wow. You get a good view, Chris. Uh, it was Susta. It was Blue Hawaiians I got inside. I thought you were shocked. I beg your pardon. No, worry. Yeah, that's a different breed helicopter pilots, I don't know. Yeah, they got uh, <laughs> two different helicopter pilots that are from Japan. Blue Hawaiian, this guy, and then a guy, uh, Shaka Shuk Five. His name is Kaji. Japanese. He's absolutely cool. What, and a very good pilot for what everybody yeah. tells me. So yeah, there's the crater right, right in front of us, so. Oh, wow. But I would suggest just kind of follow the cloud line over here, okay. and then you can circle it to the left. I've seen Excellent. it already. Excellent. So I don't need to see it again. This is all for you, right? All right, Chris, it's going to be on the left side. I'm yeah. going to do a counterclockwise around it. Yep, so we just get high enough to go over yeah, the top get of over the top of this. There's no IFR over here at all, so we don't okay. have to worry about anybody popping out. Roger that. It. This is going to be awesome. Yeah, 6,000, that should probably do it. Okay. Kind of aim for the gap in the clouds Roger. right there and just zip right on through and then we'll be good to go. We feel pretty safe about it. Looks like the right clearance to me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> tip the plane to the right real quick and look it down there. That's Mana Ulu. All that lava we were just flying over came from that. Get that, Chris. So Mana Ulu erupted from 1969 to 74. The first part of the eruption was a crack in the ground opened up a mile long. Lava was coming out the entire length of that crack, maybe 100 feet, 50 feet, 100 feet, little fountains, the whole length of it. That lasted for just a few hours, and then it quit. Then over here, another fountain started up at the end of the crack, and eventually it started fountaining 1,700 feet, if you can imagine that. 
Chris, I'm going to do a I'm going to do a quick bank to the right when you're ready here, just to get one more shot of it. Sure. Ready. OPC Cal, about a mile and a half. And at this the moment, oh shoot! No, it's okay. Right just going to keep the turn coming. There's okay. a big opening right there. Just telling us, yeah, right there it is. So if we go back the way we came in, you should be able to get a good shot out. Okay, okay got it. That's clear. There's a hike to Matahulu in the park. It's a very cool hike. It takes a couple hours. And you end up at another little cinder cone that's covered in trees. It's right next to it. And you can actually climb to the top of Matahulu, but they say the ground is rather treacherous. I think once we get past this little one, we'll be able to kind of yeah. cut back in a little bit. Yep. Or you can just go straight to it, then we'll okay. figure out the best way to do it. Right. Either way. Originally, I was suggesting the same thing, but now I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, yeah. let's, just, let's go there and then figure out what we got, okay. and then do the circle over it from that way. This used to have a, a big caldera, but a little small crater in the middle of it. The lava all drained out at the end of April, and it kept draining the, in April into June and then into July. But then the floor of the, the caldera started collapsing, and now it's made a humongous crater. It's like 10 times the size of what it used to be. And so if you've been here before and you've seen it and you see it now, you just go, wow. First time I saw it, that was my reaction, was holy shit. Then another, <laughs> another guy came walking up behind me, he, holy shit. Then another guy walked up behind him, holy shit. And it's like, you can stand there and hear holy shit all day long, man. It was absolutely hilarious. Well, there it is. Oh, wow, perfect. Yeah, this is going to be great. That's the 3.7 Yankee Hover, Holly Mama 6.3. 44 offshore, the boat launch, pass turn. Look at that. If uh, the glare in the windshield bothered you, you can't open the window in flight. It won't hurt anything at all. It'll get a little bit windy, but it's not bad. Well, I thought there was a, a structure or building over here on this road that... Uh, you might be thinking of the Jagger Museum, that's right over there. Yeah, that's it. So that, that came down as well, right? Uh, the Jagger Museum's got a lot of cracks in it. They say we may never be able to use it again. Wow. So uh, they're probably going to condemn the building. Sorry, right, I don't mean to be too friendly here. Oh, you're good. I just had somebody asking me for pictures of Jagger. I'm like, oh yeah, that's actually a good view. Crater is now 1,500 feet deep. Isn't that just freaking crazy? That is. I have the controls. Your flight controls. I can get you a real good one at Jagger if you want. Oh, that's no, right. <laughs> okay. All the yellow stains over on the far side where the sulfur been coming up. Short couple of holes, right and left, 1,000. Oh, wow, yeah, I see it. See the sulfur over there, Chris? Yeah. That's oh, so. it. rotten eggs. Yeah, if you fly into it, it gets really stinky. No doubt about it. Probably not very healthy to breathe it, but you know. Yeah. over that. Yeah, it's probably tropic birds. They like to nest in the cliffs. So this 
saw just collapsed, and then over there, it's a it was uh, er erupting. It collapsed as well. Okay. Uh, well, oh, it collapsed as well. That's Kilo okay. Icky over here. You might have driven by it. Yeah, they said uh, we wanted to do the hike there. Yeah, but the trail uh, it, it's trashed now. They're, yeah. it, they're, they're not going to open that up anytime. Yeah, they said uh, a couple of big boulders came down and destroyed parts of the trail. And yeah. Undercut other parts of it, so they say that it's actually unsafe. It could collapse off of under you. And the Blue Book said that was the best hike in the. Well, in it the is. Park. But I think Mother Ulu is right up there with it. Mother okay. Ulu hike is really cool. The first part of the Mount Ulu hike, you, park, you go down this road that kind of makes a loop at the end, and you, and you take the little loop in the park, and then you walk back to the tip of the loop. There's a road that is blocked off to traffic. You walk down that and then turn right into this trail you're going to see. Follow that. You go through woods just a little ways, maybe 20, 30 yards. You pop out of the trees, and you'll see these big mounds in front of you. That's spatter ramparts from that fissure eruption. And then right on the other side of the spatter ramparts is the fissure. And like I said, it only lasted for a few hours and then it quit. The lava started pouring back in and solidified as it was pouring. It's like it's frozen in time, but it's so cool. And you walk along that fissure. When you get to it, make a right turn and go down towards the end of the fissure that way. And uh, you'll start to see some pretty cool, pretty cool cracks that are really deep. Pretty amazing. Anyway, your controls if you want. Uh, uh, or okay, you keep taking like pictures, whatever you like to do. I, no, you keep the controls for right now. I just oh, want sure. to... Just in case that camera on the wing is batteries died, I want to make sure I get some. <laughs> All right, no worries. So anyway, then from uh, that fissure, then you take the track, uh, the trail around past the big offalo, and you go through a few kapukas, which is some little islands of trees, and see some very pretty birds. And then you go across a lot of Pohoi Hoi flows, and then you'll end up at that little uh, Hulu, Hulu Hulu, I think is the name of it, uh -huh. a little cinder cone it's covered in trees. And you go up to the top of that, there's actually an old uh, observation point that they built in the 1930s. And the scientists, when Mauna Ulu was erupting, they were sitting on that observation point, and all of a sudden a boulder fell into the hole that the lava was spewing out of, and it started shooting it sideways oh. right at them. Oh. So they had to hide behind this wall while the lava was splattering against it. Oh, and then goodness. finally when it quit, they were able to escape. But a uh, really close thing. I mean, pretty cool. Talk about bad luck. <laughs> anyway, there's a trail guide that's online. You can buy a copy of it at the, probably at the visitor center as well. I don't know. I haven't been in the visitor center since it reopened. I'm presuming they haven't. But you can just download it and keep it on your phone. But the trail guide tells you all about the eruption. It's very, very interesting. But it's a neat hike. I really like it. Alright, I'm ready. Alright. Five flight controls. Yeah, controls. Let's go back out that way. Sounds good, right's clear. Yeah, flow chain offshore Mackenzie Park for the Cape to Macaw, EBD 26, 800 feet. Weather getting any better over there? Oh well. Back to the shoreline. Yep, we're going to go to the shoreline and follow the shoreline back. I hope that that weather's okay. passed by and we can get over to Fisher 8. Because okay. you really want to see that. Might get another shot, Chris, on the way back the in. The Cape the... is clear right now. Uh, the next stuff is moving in, but uh, probably not for another 20 minutes or so. Great. We just left uh, Holly Mau Mau. We're heading over as quick as we can get there. Thank you very much. And I'm departing the Cape heading for Hilo, offshore 1.3. us to do is just uh, take a straight path right to the shoreline and then we'll descend down and go under this crap and by the time okay. we get over maybe we can get the fisher eight. Hopefully it'll stay clear. And I want to show you that in the Kapoho. So I have some pictures I'll dig out and show you along the way because there's not much to do in the meantime. In offshore Hawaiian beaches. Was 
go up. You know, between seven and 800 houses that were taken out. The first eruption happened, there was 24 fissures in all, the first about 12 of them started kicking out quite a bit of lava and it flowed straight to the ocean. And it looked a little bit like this. Oh my goodness. Look at those, Chris. It looked a little bit like that. That was amazing. Wow. So that's all dried up now. Then Fissure 8 opened up, and when it opened up, it started, it bypassed all of this. All this area dried up. It's, you'll see the channels that it was flowing in. And then Fissure 8's lava started here. I can show you when Fissure 8 first opened up. Oh so, this, so this is Leilani Estate. You can see the size of it by the houses around it. Oh. Yeah. So Fisher 8 on the right there, the other fishers on the left, they quit as soon as Fisher 8 really started going good. Fisher 8 made a lava fountain that was about 300 feet high. And uh, here's another one, so you get an idea of the size of the houses there. And so this ended up making a lava river seven and a half miles long. It was about 300 yards wide at the widest point. And then when it got down to Kapoho, which was this beautiful little sea And, and that's resort. way over there, right? That's actually that oh, way. Oh, it's down here, okay. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So there's the lava coming into Kapoho. Everything you see there is buried under about 60 feet of lava now. Everything. That's totally gone. So the TFR was over the actual eruption site? Is that how you were able to get those? Yeah, those we, we, well, we could... We, oh, you flew way over top. Yeah, 3,000 yeah. feet each, uh, MSL. It started out AGL, and then they changed it to MSL. This was the TFR here. Oh, as long as, hard, yeah, yeah, it was huge. But it, it was, was like it was 3,000 feet. It was yeah. so, the eruption was so huge, it didn't matter. Yeah. 3,000 feet, you got a hell of a view. Uh, I took all these pictures with my cell phone without zooming in. I mean, yeah, this, that this is, is exactly just how it all looked. So, another shot a little bit later in the evening, the same, same thing with the lava coming in. Wow. Honey, we should get a couple of those pictures from Scott and say that's what we saw. Uh -huh. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> So there's the Lava River when it first started going into the ocean. Those are it was amazing. kind of a little bit wide here, but there's part of the Lava River. Seven and a half miles long it was. Wow. It was totally incredible. Now that was the widest point right here, it was about 300 yards. Wow. Whoops. You want me to yeah. start working down now? Yeah, please. Okay. Just cruise descent yeah. here. So this is a big geothermal plant here right across from it. Okay, Green Lake. The helicopter guys were listening to it while I was dropping off the crew oh my at that plant. Gonna try to get it started again. I think this one kind of shows the whole thing. I got kind of far away. Wow, those are amazing pictures. I felt very fortunate to be able to fly over it. An awful lot of people I knew never got to see it. I was so busy flying paying customers, I couldn't take friends. <laughs> Except on very rare occasions. They would have had me flying from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day if they had done yeah. it. really give it some uh, yeah it created its own cloud it was a, foreboding. a pyrocumulus so the hot rising air would carry the moisture up to the cool air and it condensed out so even when the rest of the sky was perfectly clear you had a big cloud that run on top of it looked like a big thunderstorm sometimes occasionally it made lightning but not very often so as far as for reciprocating engines it's no no issues with any of the as long as you stay upwind from it yeah you yeah. go downwind of it oh yeah oh, okay but this, this eruption didn't really kick out very much ash at all. Ash is the problem, it's very abrasive. It was mostly just lava and steam and, and sulfur dioxide. Okay. So it didn't impact the airliners or anything oh, like no, that? No, 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 Like the, Euro, or the Iceland one or Greenland? No, because yeah, this one didn't kick out any ash. Just a big cloud of fumes, <laughs> volcanic gases. Can't find the one picture I was looking for, dog on it. When the lava was flowing into the ocean, at one point it spread to where it was covering about a three and a half mile length of the, of the shoreline. And if I can find the picture, it's pretty, um, pretty amazing. Couldn't even get the whole thing in the, in the frame of the picture. But the parts that I did get are pretty cool if I can find it. That's the problem, I took so damn many pictures. <laughs> yeah. I got 12,000 pictures on my phone. 12,000? Yeah, I'm not kidding. <laughs> That's insane. Oh, here it is. 
Sounds like the number of unread text messages. <laughs> I do yeah, understand that really. too. Okay, give you an idea. That right there at the end of that. Uh oh. You got the flight control. Well, I have the control. Here's your control. You have to lift up on the handle to get it up over the catch. There we go. All right, got it. Chris, you can't be doing that. Yeah, yeah, I like a choke. All right, so right at the end of that little curly cue is a 50 foot log lava uh, tour boat. Okay, so okay. you can barely see it. But look at the sun. Okay, so there's the little curly cue. Here, look at the length of the lava. You can hold it. All right. Oh, okay, you're fine. I have the control. It was totally incredible. Yeah, the phone takes such good pictures too. My back controls. All right, that's an iPhone 6. My wife's got a 7. It does even better. And I guess they're up to a 10 now or something, right? Those are, yeah. those are better than anything I've ever seen in like the books. <laughs> the problem is if you blow them up big, they get pixelated. Yeah. This is fishing right in the daytime. In the daytime, the lava, get, the lava gets this very, very thin crust over the surface just with the cooler air. And so in the daytime, it kind of looks gray. You can see the orange kind of poking through. Yeah. But if, when you fly right at twi twilight, was the best time because then the red would just glow right on through it. But uh, that's fishing right when it was going. The USGS did some measurements. So they said for about maybe about five, six weeks, it was kicking out 26,000 gallons of lava per second. Can't imagine that. Looked like a waterfall. It was totally incredible. Yeah, I can't wrap my head around that. Coming on down here. Yeah, it looks like it's sitting at about a thousand feet there. Yep. You can level up wherever you're comfortable. Okay. I actually find this about seven or eight hundred feet just gives yeah. us a better view. If it ever does a big outbreak like that again, whatever you're doing, drop everything, get an airline ticket, come here, because you've just got to see it. It's yeah, so I had no incredible. idea. It was like on-off type thing. Yeah, well, even while it was going, they said it's unpredictable. It could go for years, it could go for weeks. You just have no idea. And it ended up going from, which, June the 2nd is when the very first issue started kicking out lava, and it went all the way to April, uh, August the 5th. Now, August the 5th, it just like a, somebody turned the switch off. It just quit. I was out on the night of the 4th, and it was coming out, but really slowly. I was out on the night before that, on, on the uh, 3rd, and it was just pouring. So uh, pouring, to barely moving, to completely dead, and the channels were emptying out. All in three days. So then there was still lava inside the flow field, down towards the shoreline, and it kept trickling out for about another three weeks. You can see little trails of lava coming into the water, but nothing as dramatic as all what I'd show you. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was still lava, you know, you still got to see it. That's the 37 Yankee coming up on Kalapana for the Cape at uh, 800 shoreline. So these are some of the off the grid houses. Oh, okay. Our neighbor actually had a lot over here and they sold it right before this eruption started. <laughs> it's like, oh man, <laughs> perfect. Good market time in there. Yeah. Oh, it clears up a little bit there. And yeah, as long as we can see the shoreline. Yeah. We're below 1,200. So yeah, they got like five miles of visibility. Yep. But in Phoenix, this would be, uh, you know, IFR right now. Oh, you yeah. can't see 50 miles. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're below 1,200 feet, so it's one mile clear clouds. We're good to go. Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, this is that town of California I was telling about. So this is like a shanty town now, essentially, well, right? Well, take a look at the houses. Some of them are actually pretty darn nice. But they came back in and resettled it yeah. after the flu. You'll see some of them are just little shacks. There's even a couple of abandoned school buses that people are living in down there. You see a blue bus down there. And uh, there's a yellow oh, bus yeah. down there. People <laughs> actually live in those buses. But it's kind of, you buy the plot of land and whatever you can afford. It's not zoned for anything at all, so. <laughs> but you can also see there's a fair, look at that blue house, that's really nice. 
Tree landscape. Oh my goodness. And down here, this kind of pink house with the green roof, and that's darn nice. Yeah, that's real nice. That's so whatever you can afford, man. That's what they put in. The lava may come their way again someday. Maybe it won't. You never know. Roll of dice. Roll of the dice. So if you guys are going to be here on Wednesday... Uh, we leave tonight. Oh, okay. That uh, won't we'll work then. I'm going to tell you about, there's a place right down here we call it Uncle Robert's with the Red Cinderia's right there, that building. Yeah, they, on Wednesday nights they have a live band, they set up a farmer's market, and uh, all the all kinds of area restaurants and charity groups and stuff set up food booths to get food from all around the world, you know, Middle Eastern, Filipino, whatever you like, nice. and uh, it's no cover charge. Nice. It's a lot of fun. People come down there, they dance, just have a good time, they, they do sell beer. And everybody behaves themselves. I've never seen anybody act up. It's really nice. Where are you flying out of? Kona or Hilo? Kona. Okay. Kona. So when you leave to go back to Kona, there's two or well, three ways to get there. You can take the south way through the volcano park. That's the longest. Oh no, we did that when we went to the volcano. Uh, we went into Hilo because I wanted to see what the times would be. Okay. The, the plan is to go saddle, but we want to go up to the top of the mountain to watch oh, okay. the sunset. Is there that, you go. What, what, what kind of time am I looking at to go from downtown Hilo to the top of the mountain? Uh, top of the mountain, give yourself at least a couple hours. A couple it's, hours, okay. Yeah. It's the, dr the drive up from the base of the mountain to the top of the mountain the is really slow. Okay. Yeah, it's the first third is paved, the second third is dirt and gravel. The oh. first third third is paved again. I have no idea why the middle section is dirt. Okay. But it's very, very steep. And it'll take you a lot of switchbacks, and it'll, uh, it'll just be 20, 25 miles an hour the whole way. Do you think we'll be okay in that, that rental car, or should we have uh, some kind of I, I take it by, I, well, it's up to 14,000 feet. I got my turbo Subaru and it'll do. <laughs> it'll get up there without any problem. But uh, you can a shot. I've got a friend who had a normally aspirated. Uh, he had a, a Mustang, just rear wheel drive. He made it. The thing you really want to be careful is coming down. Use your engine braking for sure. Put, oh, okay. Put it the lowest gear you got. Burn up the, the brakes if you, you just ride them. There's people who have died because they overheated their brakes. Oh. So you got to be really careful on that. But there's right, a couple of French ladies. They didn't know anything about downshifting. And their brakes overheated, cars started accelerating, they went zooming past the visitor center at the 9,000 foot level, they were finally doing 50 to 60 miles an hour, went another mile past it, hit the next turn, went off the road, died. So, yeah, you just be careful with that. Just downshift, it makes it let yeah. you do the braking for you. Right here, uh, inside that bay, you see right in the middle there's some rocks, just yeah. on the right side of the rocks, there's a little black sand beach, the weather's not real good for it today. Okay, Hena Beach. It's clothing optional, but it's a beautiful, beautiful <laughs> place. So you see right there where the cars are parked, just above it, just to the left of the, yeah. where the rocks are. Yeah. That's a nice view there, too. Um, you won't have time to come down here for that today, uh, but if you ever come back, it's more worth a visit. We did do a black sand beach. It was, uh, we were heading to the southernmost point. Oh, okay, um, you went for the Lou? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a nice place. You see sea turtles on the beach? Uh, no, didn't see any turtles on the beach. Oh, that's um, rare. Most of the time there's at least a couple of turtles there. But, uh... We were staying at the Hilton, and there was a ton of turtles there. Oh, okay. They come to the inside that lagoon, and they go to the waterfall. It's almost like a temple for them. And they just, I mean, like 10, 20 of them, and you can snorkel right there with them. It was oh, pretty that's amazing. Crazy. Yeah, so definitely got my turtle fix while I was here. All right. So right over there where the steam is, that's where we want to go. Let's go see if okay. we can do it. That's yeah, so the 37 Yankee, just past uh, Kahena Beach, uh, heading in towards Fisher Aid, 800. And just go ahead and turn a little bit more to the okay. left, that group right there, that's where we want to go. Right there, that heading will be perfect. Parts of the cape are open. Parts of the lava trail are open. We'll do what we can. Okay. 
Try to go up just a little bit higher. Okay. Get right to the base of the clouds. We got some people who are moving back in over here and they don't like airplane noise, so they're gonna gripe anyway. Try to stay as high as we can so we don't get too much to complain about. I shot it out of Kiaka for West City 9. That might be good right there. I don't know if we're going to get any higher. Oh, wow. The Fisher 8 is this big mound right here. Fisher 9 is the uh, second steam cloud over here. That one took out my friend's house. Opened up right across the street from his house. All right, I'll give you the flight control. I have the control. Your controls. I'm going to get us over there as best I can. Just a little bit, get under it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there you go. That camera might be too much. Right. There you go. Uh -huh. All right, turn it down the flow here so I don't piss everybody off. Wow. Sorry about that. Wish the weather was better. <sighs> so this is the Lava River. It was flowing down. I showed you all the pictures of the Bright Red River. Still smoking. Yep, all the pictures on the right here. What I'm going to do is go back over that way, come down outside the clouds. Oy. The nice little Kapuka house is right here that survived. Going over Fisher 22, which made a nice little center tone. Follow the uh, fishers on down, see so if get a look at them anyway. I gotta go through the little puffs of steam yeah, there. Looks like a war zone. Yep. This is impressive. Look at that destruction. Jeez. I gotta get down a little bit lower here. Look right here's the house that burnt. You can see the roofs the uh, way they could. Right there. There's the roof just sitting out. Little section of road right here with absolutely nothing. The road to nowhere, huh? <laughs> Get a picture of that, Chris. The road to nowhere right there. <laughs> Cindercone. There you go. Is that cool? Yep. Oh, okay. So there's the plant, right? The geothermal plant? That's right the there? one. Okay. That's it.
go down this way very much further. It's like a pretty Yeah, ugly. yeah. All right, I'm going to head the shoreline. We'll okay. follow the shoreline back to Hilo. Right down here, this little in inlet down here, that's Pohiki, Isakali Park. Uh, that's where the big surfing spot was. And a good part of it is it now filled in with black sand. Right there. There used to be a big surfing. Yeah, they're trying to, you see people down there. Are there anybody down there? Uh, I don't guess anybody is. They must go left. Yeah, nobody down there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I oh, do see them. Yep. yep. And there's surfboards up there by the tree line. Shot. The shot of the side. The south side of the old jail. Watch right there, Ronnie. That's the 3-7 Yankee just past Puiki, heading toward the Cape, uh, 500 on the shoreline. Is that max high to 500? Uh, we're still kind of in and out of the soup at 500, uh, just kind of grazing the bottoms of the clouds. It's really low over here. Roger that, my huddle. You betcha, Kaji. You can see how hot the ground is still over here. Yeah. This is what I showed you that picture where the boat was. This is right where it was. Oh, wow. So straight to our left right here, there used to be a hot, or just slightly behind us, used to be a hot pond. Uh, it was a hot spring, and they turned it into a big swimming pool. Oh, hallelujah, it was called. Beautiful place to swim. Straight to our left right here was the tide pools. Real shallow water, lots and lots of fish to swim with, and little eels and octopuses and stuff. And up ahead, that bay where I showed you where all the houses were, that point that's sticking out right there, it went from an innie to an Audi. The bay was actually, you see where the bigger, bigger puffs of steam are over there? That's where the bay used to be. <laughs> steaming at the surface of this poor turtle was swimming in circles trying to figure out how to get out. Awful. But yeah, the first houses were right here. This was called the vacation land area. A lot of them were vacation rentals. There was at least two houses over here that were well over a million dollars. Man. All totally gone. But this whole shoreline's about a quarter mile out the shore further than it used to be. The shoreline about where all this, the major part of the steam is, about where the old shoreline used to be. This is incredible. The right here was the bay, and all those houses were to the left and to the right of us. All gone. I watched a bunch of them burn, man. It was terrible. That's the 3-7 Yankee coming up on the lighthouse, 500 feet, heading back to Hilo. Okay, the lava's probably going to be really hot for at least another six months. It's, uh, it comes out of the ground at about 20, what did they say, about 23, 2400 degrees? It takes a long time to cool. Alright, so uh, this lava flow on, that was from 1960. So you can see it takes a very long time for uh, trees and stuff to start growing on it. Yeah. Your controls if you want. My bike controls. So straight up this road here, there's a little uh, kind of that uh, crescent shaped mountain. Uh, it's an old cinder cone. You can lift the wing up to see it. Oh, uh, yeah, right there. See it? Yeah. Yeah, so that they used to have a lake in the middle that was about 150 feet deep and maybe two, 300 feet across. When the lava hit it, it all evaporated out in three hours. Lava <laughs> completely filled in that little lake. It's just totally gone now. Amazing stuff.
stuff, huh? Yes. So just follow the shoreline, takes us right to the airport. Okay. You can't get lost. That's <laughs> pretty okay. easy. This is all 1960, you said? All 1960, yeah. Wow. There used to be a town that was kind of right over here, on the street to our left now, and the ground opened up about 300 yards from it, and the lava started shooting out. It made a lava fountain that was like a 12 or 1300 foot range from what I remember reading. And the lava originally flowed the other way, away from the town. So they got a bunch of earth moving machines and they built big berm around the town hoping that would save it. But then the lava came that way, went right over the top, buried the whole thing. Can't even see the berm anymore. It's all gone. Totally gone. So it did end up building a big cinder cone, but they started mining it. Because it made great red cinder that they use for paving roads or whatever else. So the cinder cone's completely gone now. I can't even tell where it used to be. <laughs> Ooh, this is really ugly. Yeah, it looks like it's getting lower here. Visual and VOR DME Alpha approach east, landing in the parking runway 8. VFAR arrivals, contact Hilo approach on 119.7 or 269.2. Notice the airman, taxiway Alpha closed between taxiway Bravo and taxiway Echo. Taxiway Bravo closed between taxiway Alpha and runway 826. Taxiway Mike closed, taxiway Delta closed. Work in progress south of runway 826 between taxiway Bravo and taxiway Delta. Runway 26 islands, DME not monitored. Obstruction crane 8.6 nautical miles north of the approach end of runway 8. Under 6 feet AGL flagged. Emmett Sierra update 4 ballast. For additional information, contact home the radio. Advise on initial contact, give information hotel. Hotel information hotel 2353 Zulu. Wind 060 at 12, visibility 10. Ceiling 4700 broken, 6000 broken. Temperature 27, dew point 23, altimeter 29er, 9 or 2. Visual and VOR DME. I forgot, I missed it. Visibility, what did you say it was? VFAR levels, contact radio approach on 119.7 or 269.2. Notice the airman, taxiway alpha closed between taxiway Bravo and taxiway Echo. Taxiway Bravo closed between taxiway Alpha and runway 826. Taxiway Mike closed, Taxiway Delta closed. Work in progress south of runway 826 between Taxiway Bravo and Taxiway Delta. Runway 26 islands, DME not monitored. Obstruction crane 8.6 nautical miles. That's my neighborhood, I live about a mile of slope. Runway 6 feet AGL flagged. Emmett Sierra update 4 ballast. For additional information, contact home of the radio. Advise on initial contact, get information hotel. Tower Information Hotel, 2353 Zulu. Wind 060 at 12, visibility 10. There you go. Oh, nice. We're good. We're good. We're good. 6,000 broken. Temperature 27, dew point 23, altimeter 29er, 9er 2. Visual and VOR DME Alpha approach east, landing in the parking runway 8. VFR arrivals, contact Hilo approach on 119.7 or 269.2. Notice the airman, taxiway Alpha Pro, taxiway Bravo, hotel. taxiway Echo. Taxiway break out of this crap shortly. Yeah. Still about 15 miles from the airport. So. Probably drop down a couple hundred feet. There we go. Yeah. So, oh, so wow. See that little point? This will go right out to the edge of the point. Yeah, right over here. Right over there. And we're going we're gonna to go with the same heading that we were on. 
But from there over toward the airport. A little bit safer that way. We'll be out over the water mostly. Approach Cessna 1537 Yankee coming up on Kaluli Point inbound landing hotel. Cessna 1537 Yankee, first 0534. 0534 on the squawk. We're at 400 right now. We'll be going up in a moment. Airport's still VFR, huh? It's uh, pretty ugly over here. This is 37 Yankee, affirmative air contact over Kaloli Point. There's some of heavy rain showers moving in from the east. The last arrival from your direction. Continue following the shoreline and pick it up uh, in a parallel to the airport itself. Okay, continue following the shoreline until we get parallel to the airport, uh, 37 Yankee. There's no traffic inbound, so you'll be number one, one zero two zero at uh, one one. You just let uh, the tower know uh, which runway you prefer when uh, you get over to them. We also send a flight for you. Three seven eight. Thank you. you say zero two zero. Yeah. Which one? Okay. Yeah. Back out again. Do you want me to cut across here? Well, you can check the 37 Yankee. You can contact Tower. Over to Tower now. See ya. 37 Yankee. And let me call Tower and see what they want us to do. Okay. Hello, Tower. Cessna 1537 Yankee coming up on Shipman's inbound landing. Cessna 1537 Yankee, Hill Tower. Continue inbound. Wind 040 at 9 are advised which runway you like. There's no traffic observed. I'd like to have 26 if I could. 37 Yankee, Roger, enter left base, runway 26, wind 030, 11, runway 26, clear to land. Clear to land 26, 1537 Yankee. Okay, so just follow the shore line. 37 way. Yankee, uh, there's work in progress south of runway 826 between taxiway Bravo and taxiway Delta. There's uh, a couple of vehicles in somewhere between close to the runway, but not on the runway. 37 Yankee, copies, no worries. Silver train company, use caution, uh, small fixed wing aircraft, the landing runway 26. Well, train company being advised of a small aircraft on a runway. Just keep going, holding that heading there. Okay. Pretty soon we'll see the VOR, and that'll tell us to turn in. And looks like the visibility is improving a little bit. I'm totally amazed at the VFR still, but maybe it's <laughs> better over there. Just do special VFRs because you follow shoreline takes you pretty much for the runway. Was it the uh, VOR right on the coastline? Uh, pretty close. It's going to be inland just a little okay. bit. Yeah, if you want to go on up to about 700 feet, that's probably okay. a good thing. Unless that puts us in the muck, in which case we're going to come right back down. Yeah, it looks like it puts us in the muck. Yeah, I think that would be good. We'll just hold this. This is good. And the airport's going to be right over there. Okay. You just tell me when to turn. I'm looking for it. Oh. This is weird. Is that an updraft? No, it was almost like somebody just pulled the ultimate static. It just went, shot up. Huh. I didn't feel anything. I kind, of, kind of felt a little change with the airplane. So somewhere over there is an airport. <laughs> Indeed, there is. <laughs>
37 Yankee, the Mausers are on step three. Do you see the airport? Looks like you just went through final. I do not see the airport, actually. It's uh, almost IMC here. System 37 Yankee, Roger. The airport is 9 to 10 o'clock in two miles. Uh, 37 Yankee, turn again. Thank you. Yes. Two four zero. Uh, three seven Yankee. I got the runway in sight. Three seven Yankee. Ready. First of all, right there. Ah. There's the runway. Overshot it just a little bit. Did you want the landing? Yeah, I'll take it. Your control wants like a chunk. Yeah, quite a bit high. Here's some slaps. And 37 Yankee, like the landlock. All right. 37 Yankee, boot is requested. Thank you. Right crossway? No. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Flaps 30 for you. I hope that's okay. Hey, Hero Tower, Shark 25 with you. The approaching a shipment. Uh, Shark 700 feet. Transition airspace. Shark 25, the old tower in the fourth position. Sorry, I screwed that up. That side picture was jacked. Shark 25. <laughs> yeah, flared a little high. <laughs> yeah. But you fly a higher airplane, so that makes sense. Oh my goodness. Give her like a chills. All right. Take him. Seven Yankee going to Sporties. System 37 Yankee, continue down the runway, turn left at Charlie Park. On the runway, Charlie Park at 37 Yankee, thanks. Oh my goodness. I thought I was two feet off the ground, I was like 20 feet off the ground. The sight picture is completely got me. Alright. Yeah, I literally mushed the plane all the way to the ground. I don't know how it kept flying, actually. Yeah, it flies pretty slow. <laughs> yeah, it did a pretty... Do you got vortex generators on it? Nope. I mean, I was literally full aft, and I was still 10 feet off the ground, and it came... It still didn't back me in the head for doing uh, it. She floats pretty good. With this airplane, it is actually, all, all the other 172s will say uh, slips with full flaps are not recommended. Right. This one's prohibited. Oh. Prohibited, actually says I that. I did not know that they actually had a prohibited one. Yep. Uh, that's probably they where said, you get a lot of uh, a lot of the confusion. Yeah, check nine, when nine, people nine, are like, no, you absolutely can't slip the airplane. Truck 99, yep. company no, 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 traffic. This one will actually, uh, uh, for those under certain conditions and airspeeds, it'll, it'll actually just drop okay, a control. Okay, check nine, nine. I've seen it in a, uh, I did it at altitude in a 182, you start getting, you get these, you know, those the oscillations, as soon, and then what I tell students, I say, if, if you, you know, if you got to slip it and you're with flaps, if you start feeling the oscillation, just let out, let go of it, or just get out of it, and it'll go away immediately, yep. but if you hold it, it's going to be, going to just get divergent, you know. Oh, yeah. My end model would get the little, you could feel it pumping, but it never diverged, it would just kind of, you wouldn't even really see it in the pitch, you could yeah. feel it, the elevator is all. So, so uh, up to what year did were they prohibited? I don't know. I just know this one is. And you said it'll just break? It'll just, uh, uh, like, the bottom will drop out of it? That's what the bulk says. Uh, it, I'd have to show you the... Interesting. Interesting. I didn't know that. I'll show you in the book here in a moment. Good to know. That's probably where people say that that... 